as it stands. As Dewan Harris, fast break, lob, Abaji on the lob, and you said it, or I said it earlier, whenever he goes to the corner, he's going up for the lob, and he did it there. Hey, you gotta get, gotta get something going inside the paint. Holmes turned it over, Pettiford steals it. Here comes Dewan Harris. Harris, Grady Dick for three, yes sir! Grady Dick, beyond the arc. He has 21 points. And the crowd loves every second of it. I'm getting the chills right now, partner. That three-pointer got this crowd amped up. I got chills running through me right now. Will Jones working in the outside perimeter. Iowa State trying to get a shot here. They do. They get an open look. Holmes, though, doesn't take it. Kalshore will take it for three. And silences the crowd. From beyond the arc, it's 53-52. My goodness. That's how you respond after a big-time three-pointer by Grady Dick. Iowa State, they've been playing very well from outside the arc today. DeWan Harris, Grady Dick has it. Bobby Pettiford on the outside. Pettiford inside look to DeWan. Grady Dick, another shot. I think that one was deflected. And it's off the mark. Look, look, I don't know if it was an air ball. Other, other than that, Iowa State has it. Here's Holmes. And he turns it over. What a play by Kansas. They double teamed him at the at the out of bounds line and he stepped out of bounds. So Kansas basketball, 536 to go in the second half. Jalen Wilson comes in for Pettiford. Sorry, partner. Oh no, 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 you're good. I was just saying. Woo! I mean, how about that? Big time three-pointer. <laughs> I I literally had goosebumps running through me. I kid you not. It, this place got extremely loud. I mean, this just goes to show you how loud this place can get. But uh, what a response by Iowa State right yeah. after that to get the big-time three-pointer. Kansas needs to get something going here on offense. Yep, Dewan Harris, K.J. Adams inside. And McCuller gets it to Dewan. McCuller in the corner. Doesn't take the three. He'll give it off to Wilson. Nine on the shot clock. K.J. Dewan, six on the shot clock. They find McCuller driving baseline. Adams blocked inside. What a play. Up ahead comes Kalshore, and Kalshore had it deflected, and it's Kansas basketball for sure. 5.02 to go. <laughs> I was just going to say, Kalshore has 20 points, and Grady Dick has 21. It is a battle of the two superstars right now. I, I was I was gonna say I mean what is going on? You got the block and then Iowa Man. State turns the ball over. That's just been the the epitome of this game. It, it, it might serve as a microcosm of how this game has been for both of these teams. Got a big play and then you turn it over. Juan Harris gives it off to Grady Dick outside the three point line. Wilson gets a good look for three. Bang! Big shot. Jalen Wilson delivers from deep and it's 55, 53, and the crowd is back at it again. Every seat, the, every seat is empty because everyone is on their feet. Holmes gives it off. Lipsy driving it inside. Turnover. It is Kansas basketball. Wow. There's no place like home, just like I said at the start of the broadcast. They'll hand it off instead, and Brooks. Brooks breaks a tackle. Brooks down the sideline. Nobody's going to catch Brooks. He's going to score a touchdown. Texas scores again. It's the rushing again. What else is new here in Lawrence? Texas gets half a century in points, and it's 54-14. to 14. Texas, they lead by 40. Oklahoma State just trying to get something in the final 10 of the first half. Across it goes to Beldner. Beldner trying to make a move. She'll get it on her left foot. And she'll send a cross, and it goes right past it for a chance. It's a goal. Oklahoma State scores off the cross from Beldner, and it's 1-0 Cowgirls on their third shot on goal. And that's going to be, can't quite tell who that is. That might be Kylie Munson, number six. Harrison sends it down on the serve. Turner. Oh, what a play by Turner. It looked like she was going to set up Bien on the left side of the court. Instead, she does a little backward set to the right side. Nobody was there for Baylor, and it's 7-6. to six. That's such a high IQ play for Cameron Turner, the sophomore. Two, from two, two, two outs. This one's line, and will go fair right past the glove of Braden Bonner at third. Carlberg rounds first, will go to second, and he slides in at second base. A two-out double. And the bottom of the eighth continues. 
And now one out left remaining for KU to grab to get their second straight W on the season, their second straight win at home. They have a few road games next week, one most notably being on the road against Wichita State and then on the road against UMKC, which they'll play UMKC at home on Sunday. So this next batter is the leadoff batter. This one's hit deep by Haley Morgan at the wall. It's gone. Oh, boy. Haley Morgan, a three-run home run. It's a one-run game. Kansas baseball will start their new season with high expectations this Friday. Kansas comes into the season with 18 new transfers and a new head coach, Dan Fitzgerald, who has changed the culture around the team. Yeah, it's been great. He's definitely uh, changed, I feel like, who I am as a person, you know, not only on the field but off. You know, he constantly preaches to be above the bar, and that's in every aspect, not just on the field. That's, you know, in the classroom, off the field, just everywhere. So that's really helped me a lot grow as a person, I feel like. so. Kansas comes into the season after a 20-35 and 35 record last season, where they ended the season on an eight-game losing streak. They understand how difficult it can be to not just go through the motions during the season. Super long season. I think 56 you know, regular season games. So if you look too far ahead, it'll eat you alive. So you, know, you, just, you just take one day at a time, try to win every day no matter what, and you go from there. With the addition of all the transfers, Kansas recruited two former Louisiana State Tiger players, redshirt junior infielder Collier Cranford and sophomore infielder Luke Leto. LSU currently sits at number one in the preseason rankings. Their addition could be a big deal for the Jayhawk team. And they're coming from a program where, you know, the expectation, at LSU the expectation is not Omaha, the expectation is a national championship. So I think that that expectation of two guys that willfully walked into that, um, you, know, you got to have, you have to be tough to play there. And, and so for those two to come here and, yeah, so they've been awesome. I, I, I'm very, very thankful that that they both came with. Jayhawks play on campus at Hogland Ballpark, which holds 2,500 fans. The players and staff would love to see the fans supporting them this season. I mean, I think we're I think we're going to have a, a good fun year, and I think you're going to have fun when you come out to the ballpark, and we're going to we're going to do our best to play winning baseball and and clean baseball. Kansas opens the season on Friday with a matchup against the Valparaiso University Beacons in Corpus Christi, Texas. First pitch is at 3 p.m. But yeah, can't wait. Couldn't be more excited. These guys have worked their tails off, and and uh, we are ready for weekend one. Welcome back to KUJH. I'm Kyle Mathis. A lot is going on in sports right now. Not only are the two basketball seasons getting closer to the postseasons, but the baseball and softball seasons are just getting underway. Let's start with Kansas softball, who started their season with a 3-2 and two record through their first five games at the Candrea Classic in Tucson, Arizona. Kansas played in the Puerto Vallarta College Challenge last weekend and won three of their five games played. They took down Cal State Fullerton in a 5 to nothing thrashing, took down Ole Miss in a pitching duel <clears throat> excuse me, with a 2-1 to one win, and closed it out with a huge walk-off win over Liberty 4-3 to three, on a walk-off single by senior shortstop Haley Harper. Their defeats were against Southern Illinois 2-5 to five, and Sacramento State 1-5. to five. It's been an amazing start to the season for junior catcher Lyric Moore, who leads the team through 10 games played with 12 hits. The Jayhawks will play their next five games in the Texas State Tournament in San Marcos, Texas. They will play four teams from the state of Texas in the tournament, including the hosts, the Texas State Bobcats. Moving on to baseball, the Jayhawks began the season last weekend in Corpus Christi, Texas, where they won two of the three games played in the series against the Valparaiso Beacons. They cruised through game one with a 5-1 to one win, but were defeated 11-3 to three in game two. It was a crucial three-run home run from sophomore outfielder Chase Jans in game three, which ended up being the game-winning run, giving them the 6-4 to four win. The Jayhawks will play next weekend in Cleburne, Texas, in a four-game series against the Oakland Bears, which will span four days, Friday to Monday. First pitch on Friday will be at 3 p.m. Moving on to men's basketball, the Jayhawks are continuing their hot streak late in the season as they are now on a five-game win streak. It was a huge comeback win on Saturday over the then ninth-ranked Baylor Bears, 87-71, with college game day in town. It was rocking in Allen Fieldhouse. Just listen to this moment. Pryor short. Harris for Kansas. Ahead to Adams. That has got to be close to 120 decibels. 
The win brought the Jayhawks up to third in the most recent AP Top 25. A huge win on Monday over the TCU Horned Frogs as well. 63-58 continued their win streak and, ha and pushed it to five games with huge performances from Grady Dick, who had 16 points against Baylor and 19 against TCU and was Big 12 Newcomer of the Week as well. Kansas will play Saturday afternoon against the West Virginia Mountaineers at 3 p.m. on ESPN. It is worth mentioning that Kansas only has three games remaining before the start of the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. As for Kansas women's basketball, they continue to march through their conference schedule with the postseason just several weeks away. Senior center Tiana Jackson has been leading KU all season long and has kept the Jayhawks in every game and will look to continue that down the stretch. KUJH's Gus Balow took a look at how Jackson has earned respect throughout the country as one of the top centers in women's college basketball. Yeah, I mean, th those are some good takes. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie right now, but um, I got to say my, my picks too. And in the East, I have the Chicago Bulls. I have a Chicago Bulls shirt on. It's not just because I'm a fan. I mean, the Chicago Bulls have defied the odds in every way this season. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody expected them to be a two seed right now, uh, and nobody expected them to even have a chance to be a one. And they're 39 and 22 right now. DeMar DeRozan is having an incredible season. He's also having an MVP uh, caliber sure. season. He's Mr. Fourth Quarter this season. Yeah. Um, and he's ever, um, sadly, it just came to an end, but he had eight straight 35 plus uh, point games. And he's still continuing that streak with 30 plus point mm -hmm. games. I just think the Bulls with Zach Levine. The Bulls have also been plagued with injuries as well. Yeah. Um, they had a lot of injuries, especially towards around the winter time of December and January. I think that if they have everybody back healthy, I think we could see a Bulls versus Bucks uh, Eastern Conference final, and I think the Bulls will be able to pull it out. I think um, Giannis has been amazing, and so has Chris Middleton, but I think the rest of the Bucks team hasn't been able to. Uh, help out Giannis and them enough. I mean, they just lost to the Nets on Saturday mm -hmm. when they were favored to win that one. So I think the Bulls with some stellar defense against Giannis will be able to pull it out. And uh, in, the, in the West, I have the Golden State Warriors. I mean, I think right now the Suns and the Warriors are definitely the two favorites, yeah. and it's hard to pick against them. But I think the way that Steph Curry has played this season, um, it's definitely not as good as it was at the beginning of the season, but it's still up there. And, I mean, I was just watching a, a clip about his uh, warm-up routine earlier today where he made, like, uh, 15 shots in a row, it seemed. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the Mavericks game last night where they blew a 19-point lead was a little shaky for the pick that I made. But I think that the Warriors will be able to beat the Suns in a seven-game series, despite um, how good Devin Booker's been, Chris Paul, um, and all those guys on the yeah, Suns. Yeah, I mean... Those are some really good points, but um, at, at least for the Suns, I think they do have more depth than the Warriors. I think it just comes down to overall um, who has the more talented roster, and I think in terms of who has the more talented roster, I think it's the Warriors. And I, I mean, it's definitely a close debate on who's the most talented roster, but I think the Warriors edge it out. And I mean, the Warriors have been doing it all year, and that's why they sit second. Like, if they, uh, if they didn't have or uh, if they didn't have as good of a record as they do, and they haven't proven that they can beat teams consistently, I don't think I would have picked them, and I don't think anybody would have. But, I mean, they've proven time again that they can beat teams despite their lack of depth. And um, and then for the for the Bulls, I mean, I think, yeah, it's going to be tough to guard Giannis, but um, we saw what the Miami Heat did to, the, uh, did to Giannis mm -hmm. a couple years ago. All you have to do is kind of contain him, maybe double-team him, and see if his uh, supporting cast can kind of help him out and they weren't able to do that against the Heat. I don't know if they can do that against the Bulls. So that's why I'm so confident in the Bulls, despite their, their lack of height. Just like the Warriors, they've proven that they can win um, as well. 